Hey, what's up? So I'm about to show you an interview I had uh, with one of our clients called Jacob. Uh, Jacob is an agency owner. Uh, he's based in Cyprus at the moment, um, and he is very good on LinkedIn. He has a, a great audience on LinkedIn, uh, and his agency was was already doing very well, you know, making kind of six figures uh, per year, you know, kind of 10K plus per month. But he came to us and he wanted to take that experience, take that knowledge he had with his agency uh, and start to teach and coach other people on that journey he had had, both in terms of the agency and also then his LinkedIn following. Uh, so essentially what we've done, I'm just going to kind of use my phone as a reference here, uh, but his goal was to build a 30k per month coaching business. Now, up to date now, this is, you know, I'm filming this quite a while after we filmed this interview. He's very close to doing this. Uh, but essentially what we did when he joined was the first thing we done was we helped him to take what he was currently doing, uh, launch a coaching offer, but a high ticket coaching offer. Uh, and so how we then helped him was we took uh, his content plan, his content ideas, content strategy, and then helped him to then transfer that onto Instagram. So he had no audience on Instagram, he had zero followers, he had his LinkedIn, but nothing on Instagram. So we helped him to start creating content over on Instagram as well as on LinkedIn. Uh, one of the ideas we gave him went viral over on LinkedIn. Uh, let me just quickly check. It had something like uh, 900 people engaged, 20 plus uh, inbound DMs as well. And the leads is obviously the key point there. We then showed him our social funnel we use to kind of take leads, take inbound leads from you know Instagram, from LinkedIn, get them onto sales calls and then be able to sell to them. Um, and he made about $8,000, I think, in the first 10 days of actually implementing this system. And that was just when this started to warm up. Now he's built momentum. Uh, very recently, I speaking to him. He put out a piece of content. He generated another 22 leads from that piece of content. Uh, basically, set up calls. I was going through the sales process with all of them. That is projected for him about 50,000 euros, I believe, or $50,000 in sales. He's already closed six of those people, which is about 15,000. He's literally done that in the past few days. And he's done some of that uh, and also you know, closed clients in the past without even having without even having to get onto a sales call, right? And so this is all part of the, the system. It's all part of the, the authority uh, that we helped him to, to build with his content, with his offer, with all his other you know, positioning and messaging. Uh, and so... He's awesome, right? He's had a really great success, really great progress. And uh, yeah, so I've interviewed him. He's going to share a bit more about his time in our program. And so if you're an agency owner, if you're someone who already has a business, you're already getting leads, but you want to now take the expertise and build out a coaching offer, that's exactly what we helped Jacob to do. Uh, so give this video a watch. And if, if you're interested, feel free, drop me a message on Instagram, uh, you know, DM me the word HVC, and I'll tell you a bit more about what we can do to help. To get us started, you introduce yourself, who you are, what is it you do, and um, yeah, give everyone a little bit of background on on yourself. Yeah, thank you for having me, Harry. It's been a pleasure, you know, working together. Um, what I've been doing is, you know, in an, in a distant world, I was a broke musician playing jazz at weddings in California. You know, working fifty hours a week, being really mm -hmm. tired. But it was a something I realized was a hobby at the time, and then transitioned into learning to code. Mm. Um, and then worked in in the agency world until I started my own agency, Mojo, for the last five years. You know, we're kind of a boutique branding, web design, web development studio. Um, and obviously that comes with caveats, right? So you're scaling a team, you're, you're making inconsistent months and all of that. And me being a creative, I've had to jump in and learn the business side of design, which yeah. I realized was something I was passionate about steering that ship. Yeah. Um, and then through scaling the team, freeing up my time, I realized that as you grow in business, it was time to accept that I was somewhat a coach to my team. And yeah. then the clients I was getting were more strategy based, they were entrepreneurs and so on. But I always had this limiting belief that I wasn't good enough to mm. be that mentor. Yeah. Um, but I knew I had it. So I, I kind of found some success on LinkedIn, you know, entirely on growth as a giant experiment because I was doing content marketing for clients and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then just said, do it for your personal brand. And I used the same techniques, got a crowd, you know, about 17,000 people or whatever it is now. But yeah. at yeah. the time before we met was about just under 10. Mm. But the, the thing was, they, there was a crowd, but there was no money being made. <laughs> and, and I realized, yeah. you know, something was wrong. Yeah. Um, so here I am now trying to be this coach um, that teaches people, you know, how to grow an audience, how to monetize an audience and stuff like that. But this is now all clear, having partnered up with you and joining the program. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Yeah. I mean, it's um, 
it's pretty cool you came to us with the audience or with with an audience you have built on it on LinkedIn. Um, because as most people know, we tend to specialize more so in Instagram compared to LinkedIn. Um, but obviously, as you found, a lot of what we teach can be applied to LinkedIn, maybe slightly different, but it can be applied to LinkedIn as well. Um, I, I guess for you then, with uh, it's kind of like a, just a, a separate question. With LinkedIn itself, a lot of people try to, to crack it and, and they can't. You obviously have, you've built an audience, you're now obviously making money from it. But in terms of the growth aspect of it, what have you found to be... Um, something you've done that you, you felt was like really integral to the growth side of LinkedIn for you personally? Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of people, you know, they say, go and do this, go and do that. But they never showed you how to do it. So I was quite eager because we were growing LinkedIn audiences for my clients and there was always little tips and tricks. Mm. There was, there was of course, a bit of the algo and the timing of the post and stuff. But from yeah. a personal brand standpoint, what happened was I picked like 10 creators and I would literally mm. show up Every single day, I had a web scraping tool that told me what time they posted, and I was the <laughs> yeah. first one there. And yeah. I realized they would tell you something, but they wouldn't show you how. So I would mm. spend, you know, the 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 minute that I had um, to write content to show you how to do what the top guy was saying. Mm. So then people found value in that, and that became like a pinned post almost. Yes. Um, yes. And then the other big hack was a lot of these big creators, you know, the hundred k and up ones mm, mm. would always leave abandoned comments so i would show up and answer like 20 comments in the 15 minutes i had yeah but then i was yeah. getting clients of my ideal audience and that mm. kind of you know skyrocketed the, the yeah. growth um, yes yeah yes yeah. yeah it's a great idea because you're essentially you're, you're hijacking uh you know traffic from, yeah. from someone else in, in a way but in a great, a value-driven way, you know, because yeah. most people just drop comments. They think they can just drop a comment and that's it, and it will work, and it doesn't. And it has to be a comment, but it's value-driven, yeah, has impact, has humor, whatever it might be. I mean, you've obviously cracked that, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, but that's cool. So thanks for sharing that. So in terms of then the monetization aspect, so what obviously we, what we've helped you with now over the past, it's only been a few weeks. Well, I don't actually know how long it's been, a month, maybe just over a month or so yeah. uh, in the program. What would you say then in terms of the monetization aspect has been the biggest change you've made that's allowed you then to have the success of closing the clients and, and making the money you have so far with it? Yeah. So, I mean, one of the big things that happened was um, I went into LinkedIn having a steady business and not being sure about the coaching and, and it mm. was mostly internal, right? So what I was doing was experimenting with a, with a simple Canly mm. link that was about a hundred bucks at the time. And I would get in inbound trickles. I wouldn't even try. Mm. And that was something like, you know, maybe I'd get six or seven calls a month for yeah. a couple of months. So I was making an extra seven or 800 quid. Mm. And then walking into HVC, you know, having spoken to you and the rest of the team and everyone and, and going through even the first modules of the program, mm. I realized that, you know, I could actually earn a living by consulting people because of my advice that they wanted being two steps behind. And mm. what I did was I literally used the Calendly link as an opener for clarity. Mm. Mm. I ranked up the hand raises. I ranked out up my tone of voice. Yep. I realize that now high ticket mindset is where it's at. Yeah. <laughs> what happened was yeah. I still use the Calendly for those that trickled, but I'd ask yeah. for it. And yeah. use that as an open funnel into mm. the program that I've now built, which is high ticket coaching. Yeah. Um, what happened was phenomenal straight mm. after that. Yeah. 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 It was, um, yeah. And again, I think I remember I probably would have said it to you on the call we had before you joined, or I probably would have said it somewhere. Um, if I didn't, then this is what I, I should have said, but something like, you know, you've got everything there to make it happen you've got an audience you've got authority you've got credibility you've had all the foundations to make it happen you were just lacking the offer you're lacking the high ticket mindset you're lacking the the system essentially to to, to capitalize on it um and like you said why, why did you put it in place it's just a matter of weeks um i think it was like seven or eight thousand i done a post on it today it was like seven or eight thousand dollars i think in a space of like 10 days yeah so it was like that yeah um, and then it became that number with one post yeah, yeah, yeah. The week after, and I was like, okay, all you have to do is ask, really. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
Um, you know, so yeah, so so pretty crazy, but it was always there. You know, I think this is the, the case of a lot of people. And again, you had a good audience on LinkedIn, but it's not about necessarily having the audience. It's about the the value you build up in your marketplace that goes untapped if you don't know how to tap into it. And a lot of people watching this will have that. They will have an audience, maybe not as big, but they will have a good, valuable audience where value has been built up, but they haven't learned how to extract the value from it. Um and so, you know, they could have similar or, or, or the same results, but they just need to know exactly how to do it. So on that note, for let's say someone in your position who's perhaps two months behind where you are right now, what would be your advice? You know, whether it's one piece or, or, or half of advice, what would be your advice to that person to get the most of their audience, like in terms of monetization yeah, right now? I mean, where I cracked the puzzle, which was, you know, a mixture of your advice and the people at HVC that was mm. an eye opener was, as a founder, naturally, your head is like a visionary, it goes in many places. So the yep. first thing you told me was talk about this one thing, whereas I would go into copywriting, into design, into monetization. Mm. So at any yep. given point, when somebody stumbles on your profile, it is stacked with competence, mm. but they scroll down your posts, and one mm. of the posts is about copywriting, so you're attracting other copywriters. Yep. The other one's about offers, so you're attracting people that come here. So what we did was if I was to color code it, and my yeah. color's orange, yeah. I would have a bit of green and pink and red and blue. I made everything orange where I realized yeah. no longer talking about growth. I am a monetization coach. Mm. So mm. every single thing I posted to this day now yeah. is all about the word monetization. So the yeah. advice would be having an audience is, is, is one thing, but those people are followers. Yeah. Having fans is another one. Mm. So I would much rather have 1,000 loyal fans than 17,000 followers that don't yeah. buy from you. Yeah. And what happened was the shift in my mindset wasn't how many likes I'm getting. It was mm. I'd rather get four likes from the guy with no profile picture yeah. who's the guy that's going to buy your yeah. high ticket coaching or whatever yeah. it was. So it's mm. talk about one thing in a thousand different ways, and that can come with content pillars but always, you know, you can have as many content pillars as that, you know, make you comfortable, usually yeah. three or four, as we yeah. say, yeah. but always link it up to that one belief, which for me was monetization. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. It, you're, you're giving away the secrets. You've got, you got to stop. <laughs> okay. um, but yeah, no, of course, but it's such, it, it's, yeah, it's a very big point. Um, yeah. We get, again, we get a lot of people, probably people watching who have so many different passions, interests, um, you know, skills, ex expertise, whatever it is. And we and naturally, we want to talk about all of it. We can, but there's a way to do it. And you kind of, you, as you said, there's that one belief is, you know, you follow that that strategy. And you can talk about multiple things, but as long as it always links back to that one belief, and that's what builds your competence, your expertise in one thing. People see you as the expert. And when they hear that word monetization, who do they think of? Oh, they think of Jacob. Jacob's the guy to go to because he's the one who talks about it all the time. Um, and that's how it works. And obviously you've seen it work in the short term, but believe me, long term, how that's going to compound for you is mm -hmm. going to be, it's going to be insane pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, but that's amazing. So quick question then in terms of coming into the program, you, as you said, you, you've been to the coaches, you've implemented what we've taught, done everything that, you know, we, we sort of ask for our students. Why do you think you, you've had success? And, and what I mean by that is, is that can be either like a personal trait of like just, you know, doing what we say and not questioning, or it could be a, a trait of discipline or going above and beyond. It could be a skill you've got. It could be copywriting. I don't know. Why do you think you've had a success you've had over the past month or so mm -hmm. with this? I mean, this is a, a very, very good question because, mm -hmm. again, I, I always talk about limiting beliefs. One thing I did, didn't did have that mm -hmm. I now have is, is a lot more confidence that social media is a pool of people that care for you and they're mm. following you for a reason. So when I came yeah. in, I was like, you know, I want to serve everyone. This is all good and whatever. But I was giving 100%. And mm. what happened was I was giving 80% and asking 20%. And those mm. asks, one trickled in the inbound because I had an audience. But what yeah. I realized that gave me the, the boost was a lot of people are in your position and they're scared to ask. It's yeah. your job to send DMs, to yeah. get out there, to book calls, whether you're phrasing them as coffee chats and their friendships and their relationships. At first, mm. that was what cracked the code. And yeah. then I gained the confidence and went, boom, you're going to pitch here. They, they already know what you 
you can do for them. Mm. So I think the success was defined by, you know, a lot of people say quality over quantity, but I flipped mm. that around in the sales game and said, yeah. if I'm DMing, whatever's comfortable. It, it used to be 10 people a day. Yeah. Now it's 20, then it's 30, then it's whatever. Mm. Mm, you're mm. going to send 30, but you're going to get on five calls and you're going to close one. Yeah. So yeah. that was kind of the the success metric, I would say, finding the yeah. balance between the two. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a good point. Um, you know, I think a lot of people, most people, and this is not a bad thing, it's just it's what most people talk about, which is not right. But a lot of people preach the idea that you can just put content out, do whatever, and people just fall into your lap. You know, people just will, will bend down and say, <laughs> I want to buy from you and, you know, and whatever. And it can happen. And it does happen, right? You had it recently. Someone reached out and just yeah. like, was like, I just want to yeah. buy from you. It does happen, but it, it's not, it's not everyone. You know, it's a very small percentage of your potential clients who will come to you and say, hi, I need your help. I want to buy from you. But how much is it? It's a very small percentage. And so you're right. In terms of like scaling, cracking the code of that, uh, building that momentum, it does require you being proactive, it does require reaching out to people, starting conversations, being the person to, to to take control and start a conversation rather than just sitting there and waiting. And I think that's why a lot of people miss opportunity because they sit and wait. So they don't go and get the opportunity when it's there. Um, so there's another really good point. Mm -hmm. uh, but final question, because uh, I don't make sure I don't take too much of your time, but final question then uh, is when you invested in yourself with our program, which was, as I said, probably like a month and a half ago, it wasn't that long, but when you did decide to invest um I, I guess the question is why uh, and it's not not a why in terms of because of what we do just why in terms of your personal reason why at that time did you feel like investing in yourself what was needed and what was it that made you then decide to make that jump yeah so that that is great because i knew before i got on the call that i wanted to do something for myself regardless of whether it was yeah. this or any other program mm. and it was the same mentality when i quit music to do coding you know i had 5k yeah. in my bank account and that was it and i didn't know about my you know didn't care about the rent because i knew yeah. i was you know gonna make it happen yeah. and invested to learn to code because that was writing the next chapter of this journey yeah. when i did do the coding and i was you know you know have the business and stuff and i saw that there was potential in the coaching and mm. it wasn't just potential it was i i visualized myself waking up in the morning and what that would feel like i yeah. just said now I can spend six years mm. figuring it out by myself or being a firm believer of what I did five years ago, which is yeah. spend time to be coached by someone who's going to aggregate all the information for me yeah. and let me do that. So it's not so much the investment in monetary terms yeah. that happened. Mm. It's I, I have someone who's done it all before and my method mm. of learning is through coaching. I want to be a coach as well. Mm. Um, if I can invest X amount now, I'm probably going to make a lot more yeah. through putting myself in there. Yeah. And, um, you know, as a firm believer of in, invest in yourself, no one can take that away from you. Yeah. Um, mm. that, that's pretty much it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. Again, all, all good points. Um, invest, invest in yourself. <clears throat> um, don't worry too much about the financial side. You know it's going to come back 10 times over, whether that's short-term, long-term, as you said, five years ago, when you made that first investment, how that then helped you get to this stage. Um, you know, it, and it, again, even though what you've done five years ago hasn't directly helped you have the success you've had the past few months, um, it, in a sense, it kind of has at the same time. It's had that knock on effect that it's, it's sent you down this pathway to get into this stage. Um, you know, and I think it's important that when people look at investments, it's not just, you know, what can this give me in one month? What can it give me in three months? Or what can it give me in six months? It's also, what are the lifelong skills I'm going to learn from this? They're going to serve me throughout my entire life, throughout my entire career. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and obviously, yeah, what you're getting here is going to enable you to then sell something, you know, in any niche, in any audience, mm -hmm. in any any target, any time, any price. So you're going to have all the skills now to do that. Um, and that, that's how I see it anyway. In terms of like investments, is I, I always ask myself, not just short term, what is this giving me, but how is this going to serve me long term? Can I use this outside of what I'm currently doing? Mm -hmm. If it's a yes, and it's like. I'm not too fast how much it is. It's going to be worth it, especially long term. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so all great points, all great points. Um, well, look, like I said, I don't take any more time. We're kind of up to where we need to be in terms of time anyway. So thank you very much. Uh, I do appreciate it. Just so everyone knows then, 
Uh, where is the best place to find you? Also, you've got LinkedIn, Instagram, but but where's the best place? I'll put it in the description anyway, but where shall people yeah. find you if they I want mean, to search um, you? On LinkedIn, it's Jacob Peggs, mm -hmm. just as it sounds. And then on Instagram and Twitter, it's most mojo, most yeah. underscore mojo. Um, yeah. I am lurking and having fun there. Hope <laughs> to see you there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, amazing. Cool. Well, like I said, I'll put it down below in the description on the, the YouTube video. Um, so anyone watching who wants to reach out to Jacob, that's where you're going to find him. Um, but yeah, like I said, mate, thanks very much for your time. Keep crushing it. Uh, and most likely we'll be having another chat like this at the end of the six months. We've got a while. <laughs> um, yeah. Once you hit like a crazy number, uh, <laughs> I'm sure it's going to happen. Um, but yeah, appreciate your time, mate. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.